The game of communicating a key phrase or piece of information in hushed tones to the person closest to you is often called telephone. The game is meant to reveal how easy it becomes to unwittingly change a story. More participants and time between each exchange often results in the story becoming almost unrecognizable from the original. Silent House, while horrifying and chilling, may be one such example in film. Today on Scream to Screen, we're going to take a deep dive into the true story behind The Silent House, 2011 American remake of the Uruguayan film La Casa Muda, and their shared basis in a dark tale of abuse and murder. Before we do that, make sure to subscribe to The Graveyard Shift and let us know in the comments which true life horror stories you'd like for us to cover in the future. While both the North and South American films claim to be based on a true story, very little information is available as to the exact events that have been adapted to film. Most accounts state that the story in both films are based on a brutal double homicide that took place in 1944 in a rural village in the country of Uruguay. Most versions of these real events contain key elements that, while unchanging, have very little proof to verify the occurrence. In all cases, the real event focuses on a father and a daughter who set out to restore a home in a remote area. Days later, the bodies of two men brutally murdered were recovered from the house. In some cases, the bodies were said to be missing their tongues, and in others, they were said to be surrounded by disturbing photographs. Based on the little information we have, one might assume that one of these bodies may be the father, but who was the other man? None of the accounts give any closure. No legal documentation of the murders can be found, and what happened to the daughter remains unknown. Locals came to believe that the daughter may have had something to do with the slaying, perhaps having insight that has been lost over time. Perhaps the nature of the photographs found in the scene provided some evidence that we no longer have access to. Those unfamiliar with Uruguay may imagine a third world country without the capability of properly documenting crime. However, in 1944, the time of the real case, this is simply untrue of the Latin American country. Today, Uruguay has a high income economy and is ranked first in Latin America in democracy, peace, and is first in South America when it comes to press freedom, size of the middle class, and prosperity. Even in 1944, the country was among the first to shake off the Great Depression and continue to prosper as a leader in manufacturing. We're not dealing with an inept or underdeveloped nation. We are playing the game of telephone and the message may simply have become vague due to the passage of time. 2010 saw the release of La Casa Muda, The Silent House, from director Gustavo Hernandez. Filmed for the micro-budget of 6,000 US dollars, La Casa Muda gained world attention when it achieved great success in several film festivals, including Cannes. Part of the interest in La Casa Muda was due to the nature of the film itself, shot to appear as one continuous shot a la Hitchcock's classic crime suspense film, Rope, Casa was able to stake its claim as the first horror movie ever to be shot and edited in such a way. The story opens when Laura and her father Wilson arrive at a secluded cottage with plans of renovating it for sale by the owner Nestor. The duo intend to spend the night and begin work in the morning. Nestor warns them that the second floor is unstable and should be avoided. Additionally, the windows have been boarded and nailed shut keeping the interior of the home in darkness, even during the daytime. When Laura's father, Wilson, hears unnatural sounds coming from the second story, he goes alone to investigate, against the instruction he had received from Nestor earlier. Downstairs, Laura hears a violent racket from the floor above. Utterly terrified, Laura's fears become real when she discovers her father's dead body, bound and battered. Laura knows she must escape the house, so she arms herself with a reap hook but is shocked to find that someone has locked the doors, trapping her in the home. While searching for an escape, she finds that her father's body had been moved into a chair, now seated with a strange puppet in his lap. Laura hides from the unknown intruder that seems to be stalking her through the house, and is successful, managing only a brief peek at a figure wielding a lamp and a knife from her hiding place. When Laura emerges, she is able to locate the key to the door Bolting for the exit, she is able to free herself from the cottage. and pursued from the intruder, she runs from the home and nearly is run over by Nestor as he returns. Laura recounts the story of the intruder who has now disappeared and Nestor, unconvinced by her story, insists on her returning to the house. 
things don't go well for Nestor. Returning to the house, Nestor goes missing. Laura's lamp fails to function, so her search for Nestor is lit by only a periodic flash from a Polaroid camera. The photos produced reveal an eerie little girl and a man making attempts to stab her. Laura flees the area. She finds herself in another room with pictures posted on the wall of Nestor and scantily clad women in their underwear. Returning to the ground floor, Laura discovers Nestor, restrained and wounded, proclaiming his love for her. Laura looks into the mirror, the little girl from earlier visible in the reflection as if she stands in the room. This apparition is revealed to be her daughter, resulting from Nestor's inappropriate relationship with a young Laura, killed by Nestor and Wilson. Reflecting on this, Laura becomes enraged and brutally kills Nestor with the reap hook. Placing the creepy puppet upon Nestor, credits roll as we see the photos from the wall are of a quite young Laura with Nestor and her father. Walking into the forest, Laura meets a small child named Sophie, the ghost of her child with Nestor. The two walk together, a happy ending. This perception is shattered as the camera zooms out to reveal that Laura is walking with Sophie's doll, her delusional reality revealed. Only one year after the release of La Casa Muda, Silent House, an American adaptation directed by Chris Kentis and Laura Lau, and starring Elizabeth Olsen, premiered at Sundance Film Festival to mixed critical reviews. As with its South American predecessor, it made claims to be based on true events, but it is unclear that the main inspiration behind this retelling was in fact the La Casa Muda. Silent House employs the same real-time footage and editing that had been used with great effect in the Uruguayan version of the film. But the similarities don't end there. Here too we find a father and a daughter, John and Sarah, staying in a dilapidated home in effort to repair it for sale. Some changes are evident right away. Nestor is replaced with Peter, Sarah's uncle, who finds himself bickering with his brother John. Additionally, this house is owned by the family and has a history as a shared vacation spot that has fallen into disrepair over the past few years. In this version, there is a threat of squatters, likely responsible for the broken glass that required the windows to be boarded up. Again, even during the brightness of midday, the house is darkened with the blocked windows and lack of power. After continuing squabbling with John, Peter leaves to retrieve some tools, and we are left for the time being with Sarah and John in the darkened home. The two continue on getting the house in order, during which John finds a collection of Polaroids that he quickly gathers and hides from Sarah. Something sinister is afoot, the nature of which Sarah is completely unaware. In this version, we meet a character named Sophia, who arrives at the door unexpectedly. Sophia claims to be an old friend of Sarah's, but it is evident that Sarah cannot remember this strange woman at all. After a brief and awkward exchange, the two agree to get together later that evening. Not long after Sophie leaves, Sarah is thrown into a panic when she hears her father engaging in conflict. To her dismay, Sarah discovers the doors are locked tight and that she cannot get through the sealed windows. Sarah finally discovers her father unconscious in the basement as she continues to search for a means of escape. Her father has suffered a grave wound to the head and is unresponsive. In her search for an exit, Sarah finds a bed and evidence of squatters in the dank labyrinthian basement. Distracted, Sarah is thrown back into a state of terror when she sees a shadowy figure searching the basement. Luckily, Sarah finds an unsealed exit and escapes the house through the cellar door. Running from the house, Sarah is pursued by an unknown entity until she gets to a road beyond the tree line of the property. Here she sees a small girl, just before nearly being struck by Peter's SUV as he returns. Sarah explains that someone has invaded the house and injured her father. Peter insists on returning to the house to help John, instructing her to remain in the car while he searches the house, armed with the gun he had in the truck. With Peter gone, Sarah has the horrible realization that the back hatch of the SUV has been left open. Moments later, she is menaced by a shadowy figure attempting to get to her through the back of the truck. Narrowly escaping the situation outside, Sarah reconnects with Peter inside the house. Peter too finds and secrets away some Polaroids during their search for intruders. No one has been found in the house. More disturbingly, they discover that John's body is missing. Where he once laid on the floor now remains only a streak of blood. Sarah becomes separated from Peter, her only light source, a flash of a Polaroid camera. As is La Casa Muda, the photos produced reveal a young girl 
and a mysterious man. Sarah hides, and during a particularly dark sequence, she hears two men taking pictures of an unseen little girl, nefarious pictures of an immoral nature. Retreating to her room, Sarah's sanity unspools as she endures flashbacks or hallucinations. She recalls abusive childhood events, all indicating that she may have been sexually assaulted at a young age. Fleeing again, Sarah runs into Sophia, who reveals not only that her father John has been moved to the living room, semi-conscious and wrapped in plastic, but she also provides a key and a locked box that was seen earlier in Sarah's room. Within the box are more Polaroids, ones that indicate that John and Peter did in fact abuse her as a child, the girl seen earlier as she tried to escape. Sophia is revealed to be a figment of Sarah's delusions, something she manifested to cope with her traumatic experiences. Her memories now returned, it is now clear that there is no intruder in the house. It was Sarah exacting revenge on her abusers. After dragging Peter into the living room, John pleads to be let loose from his binding. When Sarah does free him, John shows his true colors and attacks Sarah viciously with his belt, even as Peter begs for John to stop. John mocks Peter's pleas, but while distracted, Sarah brutally smashes her father in the head with a sledgehammer, killing him. Sarah leaves her bleeding uncle and the dead body of her father in silence. The deeply troubling nature of both versions of Silent House, both captivating and alienated horror fans worldwide. Receptions ranged from celebrating the visionary qualities of the film to labeling them as problematic and disturbing. Each version explores a potential take on that apocryphal story that seems to have lived only in whispers among those who have heard the tale, leading one to wonder, to what degree were these films based on real events? Just how much was lost or added in this game of telephone that has gone on for nearly 70 years? Unfortunately, it seems we may never know the truth, and perhaps we are better for it. What's your take on these movies? Did you prefer the original to the American remake? Did the real-time editing work for you? Or did it take you out of the story? Leave a comment, and as always, please be sure to like and subscribe to The Graveyard Shift. Leave a comment if you're brave enough, and as always, check back next time to find out what else will make it from scream to scream.